Hello folks, Tiso here. In this video, I'll show you the guide to defeat Ejdaha, the new weekly boss. To fight this boss, you need to complete Zhongli's second story quest. Go ahead and open your journal, go to the story tab and spend a story key to unlock this quest. It will send you to Catherine in Liyue and then eventually you'll make your way to fight Ejdaha in the story mode. After beating him in the story mode, you unlock him as a weekly boss. And the good news is he has his own domain so you can teleport straight to him. I will separate this guide into two tactics. One is using a melee team to fight him head on, and the other is using a long range team to fight him from afar. I was able to take no damage and defeat him with the long range team. But first off, the melee team. Here is what you do not want to do. You don't want to fight him head on. He has a lot of attacks from his front side that is difficult to dodge. They either have a lot of active frames or have a huge AoE, so don't fight him in the front. Here is what you actually want to do. You want to always try to attack his tail. For my melee team, I'm mainly using Razor and Rosaria is to help with Superconduct. Jean and Bennett are there to help me heal and cleanse any debuffs. You can also use shield characters instead of healers if you have them leveled up instead. Unsurprisingly, Zhongli is a very good choice for this fight. When you are behind him, you only need to watch the stomps from his back feet and the tail slam. The tail slam is very easy to read. He'll raise his butt a little and wag his tail before slamming it down. After a little bit, he'll burrow underground. Once he dives down a second time while he's swimming in the earth, he'll respawn in front of you. If that happens, it might be kind of hard to dodge to the side. So here is the trick. Since he'll always spawn in front of you, you want to be at the edge of the arena looking towards the outer wall. This way, he has no room to spawn in front of you, so he ends up spawning in the center of the stage instead, and you are perfectly safe. Just make sure to keep dodging the little AoE eruptions. Then, he'll dive down a third time, and then always come back up in the middle. You don't really have to worry about this third dive. He also does very little damage when he pops up again in the middle. Now let's talk about his other melee attacks. He can stomp from any of his four legs that will cause three Earth Pulses. Your best bet is to move away from the stomping limb. He can also lift up both his left leg or right leg and do a side slam. If you are behind him, just run away from the boss and you'll be fine. If you are to the side, you're most likely going to get hit by this. Timing your iframes is very hard for this attack. He can also jump straight in the air and cause two earthquakes. If you time your dash, you can iframe through one of them. I have not been able to iframe through both earthquakes just by dashing alone. Once his health reaches the letter P in Bishops, he'll begin phase 2. To start this phase, he'll always pound the ground 6 times. The first 5 is a fairly big AoE around him, and the 6th time is a slightly bigger AoE. You know he's starting this phase when you see some hints on the screen. When you see this, just run away from the boss. The stomps are too much damage for any shield to handle, so the best way is just to run. If you have an archer, you can also shoot the boss while he's pounding the ground. For phase 2, he'll be imbued by an element. So far, he's only been using Hydro for phase 2. But you can just treat each phase transition as being a different element. For the Hydro phase, he'll cast some water balls to circle around the outside of the arena. These balls always go in a counterclockwise direction, and if you're in the middle, you don't really have to worry about them too much. There is a water ball that kind of cuts through the middle, so watch out for that one. For the melee strat, do the same thing as phase 1. Stick on his tail and keep attacking. However, all his melee attacks now will be imbued by the water element. This will make his stomp shoot extra jet streams in cardinal directions. If you get hit by any of these attacks and don't have a shield, you'll be taking damage over time. That's why it's recommended to bring healers or shielders for this fight. When he headbutts the ground, he'll also spawn a water eruption, but that's very easy to dodge since you can see the big blue circle. Just stay away from all those ground indicators and keep damaging the boss. Once the boss's health hit the letter O in the word Lord, he'll begin phase 3. Once again, you'll have a warning in the middle of the screen. This is your indicator to run away. He'll do his 6 stomps again like the transition to phase 2. For phase 3 this time, he will be imbued by Electro, but he might be different elements in the future. At the start of the Electro phase, he'll dive underground and stick his tail out. This is a great chance to damage him you'll want to stay somewhere close to the center. During this phase, keep an eye on the ground. There are many fans or sectors that will get hit by electro damage. However, there's a couple safe lanes as well. 
Keep an eye on the ground to see what is not glowing purple and stand in those safe lanes. If you're lucky, one of those safe lanes may be next to the tail so you can keep on attacking with melee hits. If you're too far away, use some ranged attacks or elemental skills or just wait it out until you can go back in. It's better to be closer to the center during this attack because you will need to run less to reach a safe spot. After several of these attacks, the boss will come back up. Now it's back to the tail strategy. Just stay behind him and keep attacking the butt. However, in the Electro form, his tail slam is a little stronger. After slamming down with his tail, it will cause extra Electro explosions, so stay a little farther to the side and wait for those to blow up. He also shoots out some Electro orbs from his tail sweep. Ishtaha will also have two new Electro attacks in this phase. When you see some electricity on the ground and his tail going up, run away. He will be channeling Electro balls in the air that will target you. If you are too close to the boss, those balls are extremely hard to dodge. That's why it's better to move away and then run in a circle around the boss to dodge those Electro Balls. Another new attack is Electro Spikes. He will shoot down 4 spikes that will home in on you. At first, this was extremely hard to dodge until I figured out what to do. Instead of dashing away from where the spikes land, you want to dash into the landing area. If you time it correctly, you can iframe through all 4 spikes and not take any damage. Just take a look here. And finally, if you take too long to defeat the boss, you will be imbued by both water and electro at the same time. You know this is happening when he does his 6 stomps again. As usual, just run away when you see those stomps happen. If you haven't defeated the boss at this point, he'll cast the water orbs again, but his attacks will still be imbued by electro. It pretty much becomes a DPS race at this point. You want to stay in the middle to avoid the water orbs, but you also don't want to be too close to the AoE of the electro attacks. So your best bet at this point is to use all your abilities and burst to bring the boss down. The melee method is harder of the two for this boss. Now I'll show you the long range method to defeat Ishtaha. This is the method I use to take no damage. Before I start, I want to take this chance to remind you to subscribe. Only 17.1% of my viewers are subscribers, and these reminders apparently do help out. So if you like my guides and content, please subscribe and smash that like. As a bonus, I'll show you this extra trick. If you swap characters the same time Ishtaha's cutscene starts, you will skip the cutscene and be able to move. The boss won't take damage during his cutscene time, but you can hit it with elements to get your reaction started. Now onto the actual long range method. Since my main DPS is Ganyu, I have a level 40 Diona to give the Cryo Resonance bonus and give some shields in case of emergencies. I also have a level 50 Shengling to pop out Guoba for a little extra damage. And of course, Bennett to increase my attack and heal if needed. For the long range method, we will try to be fighting far away. His attacks will be a little different and easier to dodge from this distance. If you are far away, he can shoot some spikes. They do a little damage if you are hit by them when they land and then they blow up shortly after. Just run away from these and you'll be fine. He can also jump up and do some slams or some headbutts with shockwaves. When you see him do any of these slow attacks, just dash away or to the side. Just keep doing damage and he'll eventually dive underground. If you do enough damage fast enough, he'll skip the diving phase and go straight to the middle and start phase 2. If he does dive underground, just face the outer wall to force him to emerge in the middle and not on you. This is the same trick I used in the melee version as well. Since we have long range, we can keep attacking the boss while he stomps around. Notice you can only damage the boss to a certain point before he stops losing health. I guess this is to stop the boss from dying too fast against overpowered characters. Today, you witness your reckoning. At the start of phase 2, he'll summon water orbs to orbit the arena again. This is actually the most dangerous part of the fight with the long range tactic. The orbs can spawn anywhere, and if you are unlucky, it could spawn right on you. Once the orbs spawn, they will be moving counterclockwise. Knowing this, I always look to the left real quick to see if there's any orbs coming at me. If there is, I navigate out of the way and continue hitting the boss. If there isn't, just keep shooting the boss. Similar to phase 1, he doesn't have any scary attacks in phase 2 if you are far away. Just keep attacking until he transitions to phase 3. And once again, there is an HP threshold that he cannot go below. You stand upon 
your tomb, though you know it not. Anyway, just wait until he becomes infused with Electro and digs underground again. This will be the same cone sector attack that he did before. We will be using the same tactic. Try to stay near the middle and look for the safe lanes. Once you are in the safe lane, then go ahead and shoot the tails for some extra damage. Try to prioritize your safety before attacking. At this point, you can either go in and use all of your team's attacks, or just stay at range and keep shooting from far away. The most dangerous range attack he has in his electro form will be the spikes. Just use my method here to dodge into the spikes instead of away and you should be fine. That pretty much covers all the attack from this boss. He should get a pyro and cryo form sometime in the future, and if those have vastly different attack patterns, I can make a follow up guide to help you out. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and have fun with the update, Traveler!